Hi everyone, in this video we'll be looking at increasing annuities paid in discrete time. To recap, previously we looked at finding the present value of a level annuity where the cash flows were level throughout the period. Here we looked at payments made in arrears as well as payments made in advance. And we came up with these two formulae to summarize what the present value would be. And when we worked out these formulas, we showed our cash flows on a timeline as follows and we wrote out the discounted cash flows. We then pulled out a common factor of x and then we simplified the formula using our actuarial notation for an annuity paid in arrears. Now the idea would be to do very similar for increasing annuities. For discrete increasing annuities we basically have two cases. The first is where we have arithmetically or simple increase in cash flows. Here the cash flows increase by the same amount each period. And we've got an actuarial notation for this as follows. For case number two where we have our cash flows increasing by a factor or geometrically or compound increasing, we don't necessarily have an a unique actuarial notation but we make use of existing notation to work this out. Let's begin. We start by drawing out our timeline and then we show what the cash flows would be at each different time point. We see here that we start with the cash flow of 1 then 2 and so on and so forth. So the cash flows increase by a simple amount of 1 if for each time period. We now want to discount all of these cash flows to time zero. And in order to do that, we start by writing out our cash flows and then applying a discount factor for the relevant period to each cash flow. And what this gives us is simply line number one. We'll call this line number one. And the next trick to do is to multiply both signs by one plus i. And when we do this, we see the right hand side simplifies just a little bit and we call this line line number two. The next trick is then to take line number two and subtract line number one from it. This simplifies things a bit on the right hand side. And what we'll notice is we can see a cash flow pattern for an annuity in advance appearing, which we then substitute in with our formula and we've got that annuity in advance minus NVN on the right hand side. We then divide both sides by I to get the present value equal to the formula that we've got and this becomes our increasing annuity formula for period of N and where cash flows are paid in arrears. When we're trying to work out the future value of the same series of cash flows where we have increasing cash flows paid in arrears for a period of N, we simply find the future value of the present value. In other words, we accumulate what our future value is for a period of n periods. This can be written out as follows. Now we look to simplify this a bit more. And we do this by writing out the terms and multiplying right through by 1 plus i to the power n. This gives us the following formulae and we can donate it with ISN and this would be the future value of an increasing annuity paid in arrears. More formally we can donate the present value of a simple increasing annuity where we have cash flows of xi at time ti equal to i. So that's your ith cash flow is equal to i itself for where cash flows are paid in arrears over a period of n and when we see this cash flow profile we know that we can use our increasing annuity formula. Similarly, to work out the future value of a simple increasing annuity, we look for this cash flow profile as follows, and then we can use the notation we've got in front of us. Continuing with case number one, but this time with cash flows in advance, we can follow a very similar approach. Once we've marked out our cash flows on our timeline, we simply write out the present value by discounting each of the cash flows. Then we multiply both sides by V to get line number two. And what we'll see is once we've done this, we can immediately recognize that we've got an increasing annuity 
let's pay Nereus on the right hand side and then we divide both sides by V to get our new formula for when we have annuities and cash flows that are paid in advance. Here we simply continue multiplying through by 1 plus i and using what we know in terms of the relationship of i and v and d we get the formula as follows in blue. This is the present value of a simple increasing annuity where cash flows are paid in advance. To find the future value of cash flows paid in advance, we follow the same approach where we simply accumulate our increasing annuity present value formula. And by doing this, we get a new formula for the future value of an increasing annuity paid in advance for a period of n. Multiplying right through by 1 plus i to the power n gives us this new formula as follows. We can see that this is very similar to the formula for the future value of cash flows that are paid in arrears except for the denominator. More formally, we can write down the present value of a simple increasing annuity paid in advance over a period of n as follows. So here we're looking for this cash flow profile starting with 1, ending with n v to the power n minus 1. And when we have this, we can use this increasing annuity formula. Similarly, to find the future value of a simple increasing annuity where cash flows are paid in advance, we look for this cash flow profile and we use this formula. Now moving on to case 2 where we have compound increasing cash flows, we start by writing out our cash flow profile as follows. Now in this case, our cash flows only start increasing from the second cash flow or from year number 2 and it increases by the same factor in each period, namely 1 plus j, that's written in pink. And if we do this, we get the following set of cash flows. Now in order to work out the present value, we simply discount each of these cash flows for the relevant period to get to time zero. Now at this point, once we've written out the present value formula out, we have two different options that we can use to simplify things. The first option is to use the sum of a geometric progression. The formula looks as follows. Here we have a as the first term, ar, ar squared and so on and so forth. So r here is the common ratio and that is common to each of the subsequent terms after the first one. So when we've got a cash flow profile that looks like this, we can make a use of the sum of a geometric progression formula. And this will give us a quick answer for the present value. Applying the geometric progression formula, we can see that A is 100V, our first term, and that R is equal to 1 plus J times V written out more fully 1 plus j over 1 plus i this is our common ratio so then simply plugging into the formula we have this as our present value so it's quite a neat way when we ever see a cash flow profile where we've got a common ratio and a fixed first term our second option is to combine 1 plus j v and we do this by first writing out our present value formula. We then pull out a V. We can see that the powers of our 1 plus J and our Vs in our first line don't match up. And in order to get them to match up, we pull out V as a common factor. This leaves us with line 2 where the powers of 1 plus J and V all line up. And once we get to this point, we can now combine 1 plus J and V and we will use a new term called VK. And VK will equal to 1 plus J over 1 plus I. And this is essentially a new discount factor using an interest rate K. Now at this point, it's not important for us to actually calculate what K is since we already have what VK is and we won't need K later. Once we've combined it, we can re rewrite the present value formula as follows and this 1 plus vk plus vk squared plus dot 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 this is essentially our formula 
for an, an annuity in advance at an interest rate k and we will then substitute that formula in now you'll note that we simply just need vk we don't actually need k to calculate this out so this is what i was referring to in terms of a formula here we are using an annuity that's paid in advance at an interest rate k but you may find a situation where you are using an annuity in arrears formula now these cash flows were made in arrears but we ended up using the annuity in advance formula so when we have a compound increasing annuity we have two options to calculate the present value either using the geometric progression formula or combining our increase factor and our discount factor to create a new discount factor and then making use of our usual annuity formula accordingly so to wrap up when we've got case number one we can make use of these two simple increasing annuity formulae now the key thing to look out for here is where the payments are made in arrears or in advance and you can see the two different types of cash flow profiles that we have teal and in green and looking at them memorizing them you will then know when to use which of the increasing annuity formulae similarly when calculating the future value of simple increasing annuities we have these cash flow profiles for case number two when we've got compound increasing annuities we can either use the sum of geometric progression or we com can combine one plus j and v and define a new discount factor to calculate the relevant present value Top tips, always remember to use a timeline to identify your cash flows, more specifically in this case, to see where they start and end, and also what the cash flows will actually be. When you've got increasing annuities, it's even more important to stipulate and write out where your cash flows start and end, and what the cash flows will be. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends.